A pop song plays in the background as we see a photo film like slideshow showing solo pictures of Sasha in a photo booth posing for the camera during 2019. The slideshow rolls to show Marcus's photos next with the same style, also in 2019. The photo film rolls again to see them both happy together in 2003 during their last high school years, in 1999 during their middle school, and in 1996 during their primary or elementary school years. The screen shows us that the movie begins during 1996 in San Francisco. Sasha Tran is a Vietnamese girl, whose parents are not available most of the time during her childhood and teenage years. She walks alone to her house from school and opens the door. She comes inside, removes her shoes, and turns on the lights. An answering machine beeps to a voice message of her mother informing her that she and Sasha's father are working late at their store as usual. Sasha does not seem to be surprised by this as she is used to it. Her mother instructs her to make herself dinner and not to watch television. A sad piano instrumental is playing in the background as Sasha prepares her own dinner. She is standing on a stool as she does this. She puts garnish on top of her rice, arranges her spam nicely, and finally, sticks a little umbrella toothpick on her rice as a decoration. She smiles while looking at her work. She eats in silence, sitting on the couch with her plate on the center table in the living room. She turns on the television to watch a show. She seems satisfied by it. She hears their doorbell suddenly and looks a bit alarmed. She goes to the door and opens it to see Marcus. He asks her if she wants some soup. She smiles. He says that it was his mother who told him to ask if she wanted some soup. He explains that his mother makes more soup than their family can eat in one night, and that he is forced to bring the leftover soup to their school in a thermos. He further rants that no one wants to sit beside a kid with a thermos soup in school, with exception to the other ones who also bring thermos soup whom he does not want to be with. Sasha looks at him mockingly and closes the door. Marcus looks shocked with this but only after a second. Sasha opens the door again and laughingly tells him that she was just kidding. She asks him what if she really did shut the door on his face. He tells her that he thought she just did that. She replies that she did it to be funny and they both laugh. They both go to Marcus's house which is just next to Sasha's house. As they go, Sasha tells him that she would not have shut the door in his face as he is her best friend. She also adds that she will still sit with him at school even though he brings a thermos soup. Marcus opens the door, yelling to his mother that he won't be bringing thermos soup to school since Sasha will be eating with them. Sasha is watching beside Marcus's mother, Judy, as she prepares a Korean dish. Judy is very kind and friendly to Sasha. She tells her about how the key to making it is using the best ingredients. Sasha replies that the dish smells so nice and addresses Judy as Mrs. Kim. Judy insists that she call her by her first name. Sasha laughs. Judy is cutting green onions with scissors as she shares to Sasha that they, Koreans, cut everything with scissors. Harry, Marcus's dad, jokingly adds that they cut their children with scissors too. They all laugh. Judy asks Sasha if she wants to try cutting the green onions with scissors. She agrees and Judy steps aside to let her do so. She watches the way Sasha cuts and commends her by saying that she is a natural with it. Sasha thanks her, this time referring to her by her first name. They both giggle. Judy asks her if she is sure she's not Korean as a complimenting joke. They both giggle again. As Judy tells of a story of her painting a sparrow during dinner, the camera shows us a corner filled with paint brushes, canvases, watercolors, and unfinished paintings. We also see some of the finished works that are hung up on the wall, a scenery landscape, a portrait of Marcus, and a landscape with Harry. All of these are Judy's works. She continues telling her story wherein the sparrow she was painting flies away. She then says that that is when she has realized to paint first the thing that can fly away. Everyone at the table laughs. Marcus quickly asks his father for money so that he and Sasha could go out for the night. Sasha innocently looks at Marcus then at his parents. Judy smiles, almost as if pleadingly, to Harry. He pulls out something from his pocket, and we see Marcus and Sasha running down the street. A pop song plays in the background as we see them both riding the train and giggling. It continues as they pose inside a photo booth. The pictures taken here are the same as the 1996 slideshow photos at the opening of the movie. They were given a keychain in which one can look through to see the photos. Sasha giggles as she looks through it, seeing their joyful photo together. Judy takes a photo of them inside Marcus's house wearing rock star costumes for Halloween. Marcus and Sasha are now in their early teenage years. Still, Sasha helps Judy prepare meals. We see Marcus and Sasha laughing while eating at a restaurant. They are with another friend, Veronica. A few years later, Marcus performs with his band in a bar. Sasha supports him. It is now the year 2003. Marcus and Sasha are now just a year from college. They are in a dock and Marcus teaches Sasha fishing. She seems unsatisfied with it as she realizes that it is not as much of a thrill as she expected it to be. Marcus tells her that that is what fishing is and asks her if it is fun. She replies that she would like to catch a burger instead. Harry calls Marcus with an alarming tone. Marcus and Sasha look at him worried. Sasha comes to him quickly and asks if he is okay. He replies to her that there has been an accident. Judy has passed away. Sasha sits alone looking sad at Judy's wake in their house. She stands up and goes to the kitchen to see Harry looking for something in the cabinets and slamming its doors. Marcus comes to him and pats him on the back. 
Harry says that he could not find the coffee filters as he doesn't know where his late wife had kept them. He is deeply frustrated, opposite to the cheerful Harry we saw earlier. Marcus opens a cabinet, the one that Harry has already looked at just seconds ago, and finds the coffee filters inside. Sasha sees this and tears up. Marcus looks at his father with a worried face. Harry sniffles and sighs with tears in his eyes. Marcus is in his room and holds an unfinished painting of him and his parents. Sasha comes in and invites him to go out with her. Sasha sings incorrectly yet emotionally to a song in Marcus's car. They are parked alone at a parking lot. Marcus looks at her and says that she doesn't know the lyrics. She dismisses him and says that she doesn't need to know the words to know that the song they are listening to is emotional and sensual. Marcus laughs as she continues to sing with unclear lyrics. Sasha laughs with him and says that it is cool to see him laughing again. Marcus smiles at her and giggles softly. Sasha bites her lip, thinking for a moment, and kisses Marcus on the lips. They are both surprised by her action. She says sorry to him and goes back to her seat nervously. Marcus kisses her and they make love in the backseat. Afterwards as Sasha lies down on his chest, Marcus awkwardly tries to put his hand on her but sees that it is an uncomfortable position. She looks shocked about what happened between them. To ease the awkwardness, they both ask each other if they are okay, to which both respond positively. Sasha asks him where he got the contraception from and who taught him to put it on. He tells her that someone taught them about it for a day during 7th grade. Sasha makes a comment on how Marcus's car smells like parmesan. He tells her that it is because he keeps parmesan in the glove compartment. Sasha still looks shocked. He asks her if she wants to go get something to eat to which she quickly agrees to. They both stand across the counter of a fast food chain, deciding on what to order. Marcus awkwardly tries to put his arm around Sasha's shoulder. She seems irritated and tells him that he doesn't have to do any of it, referring to typical couple gestures. He puts his hands in the pockets of his jacket and brings them out immediately to cross his arms. Sasha notices this and tells him that he is being really weird. He puts his hands to his sides and says that he is not being weird and that she is the one being weird. She sighs loudly while rolling her eyes. He points it out and copies her, mocking her that it was weird. She defends that she is a hard breather, he replies that he is now informed of it. She is disgusted by this and he is quick to justify that it was supposed to be cute, explaining further that he knows what she sounds like because they already shared an intimate moment. Sasha stops him while looking at the people around her, ashamed. He tells her that it was her idea to go all the way. Sasha points out that he was the one who kissed her with tongue. He rebuts that she was the one who removed his underwear. She reasons out that she only did it because she feels bad that he would go to college and tell everyone that he has not yet engaged in lovemaking. He says that he was planning on lying about it and adds that he is not going to college anyway. She is taken aback and asks, with an aggressive tone, when has he decided on it and why? He tells her that he doesn't have to explain anything to her. Sasha becomes silent and tries to comfort him, saying that she lost his mother as well. He bitterly tells her that she was not her mother but his. He adds that just because she is always at their house because her parents don't care enough to ever be around, does not mean she knows how he is feeling now. He looks regretful that he said these words right after he said them. She calls him a contemptible person and walks away. He starts to go after her but stops himself. The cashier notices this and asks if he wants a burger to eat in his car and cry. Fast forward to the year 2019. We see Knives and Mercy, an award-winning restaurant owned by Sasha, in Los Angeles. Sasha is now an internationally known celebrity chef. Inside the kitchen of her restaurant, Veronica, Sasha's friend and right hand, tells her that she is going to be late to which Sasha replies that she is waiting for Brandon Choi, her fiancé, and mega restaurant developer. Veronica asks her about her plan about opening another restaurant in San Francisco as Sasha oversees some of her cook's works. She asks them to smooth the wrinkles out on vegetable dumplings they were preparing. Veronica continues to say that she needs her to be in San Francisco permanently by the end of the week. She also tells her that her mom wants to pick her from the airport, but when she told her that she would get Sasha a car, she yelled and hung up on her. Sasha stops walking and tells Veronica, as she unbuttons her coat, that her parents' worst fear in life is for her to tip somebody, and that is why she has learned to cut her own hair. She asks Veronica if she looks good. She replies yes and pulls out a bottle of water from her thigh and offers it for her to drink. Seeing as it came from her thigh gap, Sasha kindly declines. Veronica is flattered and thanks her for calling it a gap. Sasha adds that her Spanx is on backwards and there is no time for her to change. She asks Veronica how she is feeling as she is expecting. She replies that she feels very pregnant and rants about her madness towards Kate Middleton and her royal diaper. Sasha stops her and tells that she doesn't want her to be talking about things like that in front of the customers. Brandon comes up to Sasha and gives her a kiss. He compliments her and asks if she is ready. Veronica tells them to enjoy themselves as they go away together. At the Operation Smile red carpet, a reporter introduces the couple to the camera and asks Brandon if his other culinary star clients ever get jealous that Sasha is receiving special treatment, as she is his fiancé. He replies that he hopes they are a little bit jealous but not enough to stop him from working with her. The reporter comments that they are an amazing couple. 
They share a kiss and the screen shows them both inside a car, not sitting close to each other and both using their phones. Sasha puts her phone down and tries to initiate a conversation with him. He doesn't notice her and seems to be smiling on his phone while typing. She tries again by asking if she can play some music. Again, Brandon doesn't answer her. Marcus is in his room, dancing in front of the mirror while stoned. His father comes in and asks him what he is doing. Marcus challenges him to dance and he does so. Marcus laughs and says his father wins the battle. As Marcus injects him with his medicine, Harry tells his son that they will be installing a furnace down at the mission. The two of them now have a job that offers heating and air services. At her house, Sasha shows Brandon black flowers and asks his thoughts about it being at their wedding. He looks like he wants to disagree but allows it. Sasha says with enthusiasm that she doesn't want to be a boring bride. Brandon sits beside her and tells that he wants to postpone the wedding. Sasha's smile disappears. He explains that there is a business opportunity for him in India. Sasha brings up that she then will be going to San Francisco alone. With this, he reasons that it would be beneficial to their marriage as they would experience being apart together before entering a lifelong commitment. Sasha explains this to Veronica who does not approve of it. Sasha also tells her that they would also be seeing other people. Veronica seems more confused. Sasha reiterates it and adds that it is so that they can be sure that they belong to each other. She tells Veronica that it's all good. Veronica doesn't believe her. Sasha excuses herself to go to the inventory to hide her sobbing. One of her cooks walks in on her to get something. Sasha gives it to him and bitterly tells him to never give his heart to anyone. He thanks her awkwardly and goes out. We see Harry and Marcus driving up to Sasha's place in their business vehicle. We see the name, Harry and Son written on it. Harry rings the door and to his surprise, sees Veronica. She greets him and they both hug. Marcus sees her and Veronica tightly embraces him as well. They share a small conversation and Marcus thanks her for hiring them. He also congratulates her on her pregnancy. She thanks him and informs him that it is not her house. Sasha walks in and is surprised to see Marcus. He stammers while greeting her awkwardly. He tells her that he thought she moved to Los Angeles. She replies that she did and is only in San Francisco for two months as they are opening a new restaurant. Harry sees her and excitedly hugs her. They greet each other joyfully. Sasha asks him how he has not changed a bit to which he replies that he washes his face with shampoo. They both laugh. He says that he thought that they will never see her again back at San Francisco, and goes on to ask her how much money she makes now. She laughs thinking it was a joke. Marcus tells her that he's serious with his question. He also says that he knows that she was getting married. Marcus looks at him with slight sadness on his face. Sasha and Veronica exchange looks as they both know that the wedding is postponed. Harry asks her how old is her fiancé. She tells him his age and other unnecessary details about him. Harry and Marcus don't seem too interested in this. Sasha accuses Veronica that she hired Marcus on purpose. She says that she has no idea that Marcus would be involved. Sasha rebuts that their company name includes him to which Veronica absurdly reasons that she thought the company name was Harry and Son. Veronica initially planned for Marcus and Sasha to mingle. Sasha tells that she wants to mingle with strangers and adds that Marcus is not her type anymore. Veronica asks if it is because he's not a prig to which she rants that he is a stealth prig. Veronica tells her she needs to attend to the nursery motif. Sasha looks at her pool and chuckles. She mutters that Marcus doesn't even have one. The next day, Marcus does his job at Sasha's house while she is on a business call. He slightly shakes his head as he listens to hear. He asks her if it gets tiring, referring to her changing her voice. Sasha thinks that he is asking about her work and says that she loves it. He clarifies that he was referring to her phone voice and mocks her. She says that it is rude of him, especially that she is his customer. He says that it is not her. She replies that he hasn't known her for a very long time and mocks him in his uniform. Veronica comes in to drop them some food before going to the restaurant. Sasha enthusiastically says goodbye to her, to which she responds by telling her not to use her phone voice on her. Sasha becomes quiet, realizing that Marcus is right. He smiles and she shows an annoyed face. Harry teaches Sasha how to use the thermostat that they have just installed. She thanks him and they hug. She also thanks Marcus and he plainly says she is welcome. Harry seems to be disappointed that the two didn't hug. As they are walking out, Harry suddenly mentions about inviting Sasha to Marcus's gig tomorrow. Sasha asks about it while Marcus tries to stop his father who was enthusiastically sharing about his band that is 16 years strong. Harry tells that he will get Sasha a flyer to the show. Marcus discourages him but he still goes to their van to get one, leaving Marcus and Sasha alone. Sasha asks if the whole band is still together. He says that only he and Quasar are left with two new members, one of which Sasha doesn't know personally. Harry comes back with the flyer, smiling, and gives it to Sasha. She says that her schedule is a little tight. Harry says that he is surprised that Marcus and Sasha lost touch, as they used to be so close, and adds that he always thought that maybe they'd end up together. He smiles and waves her goodbye. Marcus is embarrassed by this and follows his father outside. Sasha looks up Marcus's band's website and smiles as she sees it. Meanwhile, Marcus reads an article about Sasha's success while smoking and also smiles as he reads it. He puts away his smoke and gets a box from under his bed. Inside is the keychain they got from the photo booth. He looks through it and smiles after he sees their photo. 
An interior decorator discusses with Sasha and Veronica the design for the new restaurant they are opening called Saintly Fair. Sasha seems to be annoyed with her idea as she repeatedly brings up Gubai chairs. Sasha's parents come to visit her. She forces a smile as she welcomes them. His father asks her who picked her up at the airport, she replies she got car service. He asks if she paid tip, she sarcastically says that she jumped out when the car stopped. She forces a chuckle when they don't laugh and asks them what they are doing in the area. Her mother replies that Veronica posted that Sasha would be there. Sasha looks and growls at Veronica who suddenly excuses herself. His father says that they have so much free time now that they have sold their store. Her mother shares that they would be throwing Sasha's cousin's son, Liam, a birthday party soon and invites Sasha so she could see the new house. She tells her parents that she will be busy opening a restaurant and that she has to fly to New York to open another one. Her father asks when she will be leaving because he knows someone who can pick her up and she won't need to pay a tip. Sasha is alone at her house and preparing her own food. She eats on the table alone, just like when she was a kid. She spots Marcus's flyer and thinks of going. Marcus's bandmate that is in charge of the merch is pleased to tell them that they have sold seven shirts and also got tennis balls with their band's name. Both Marcus and Tony seem dismayed. Tony suggests that they should play in bigger venues such as Southeast. Marcus does not want to. Sasha and Veronica come in to hear them play. Sasha smiles as Marcus sings. He notices Sasha and smiles. Marcus, Tony, Sasha, and Veronica have a short catch up with each other. Veronica leaves early as she is pregnant. Marcus invites Tony and Sasha to eat. However, Sasha declines as she needs to be early for tomorrow and thanks him instead. Marcus's girlfriend, Jenny, frantically runs up to Marcus and affectionately kisses him. Tony excuses himself to leave. Sasha looks at them with a disgusted face as they kiss. Marcus introduces them to each other. Jenny says that she is a fan and offers to cook for her. Sasha accepts and Marcus is surprised by this. Spanish music plays at Jenny's place as she serves a dish to Sasha. She thanks her and says it looks amazing even though she is disgusted by it. She takes a bite and fakes a compliment. Jenny is excited, thinking that Sasha likes her cooking. Sasha asks how the two met and Jenny shares their story. She mentions that they are married. Sasha is surprised and the two clarify that Jenny only meant spiritually. The three continue to bond and make jokes. Marcus seems to be forcing his laugh with Jenny. Marcus and Sasha share laughs as they walk to Marcus's car. It is the same car which they have made love in years ago. Sasha peeps at the back seat. Marcus notices this immediately and asks her why she was looking at it. She denies it and he asks again. This time, she jokingly lies that her chiropractor advised her to. He teases her, saying that she was looking at the back seat. He asks her what she thinks about seeing it after all these years. She replies that it might be smaller and grosser than she remembers. They both laugh. She says that it would be nice to lose her virginity somewhere classy. He reasons that he was only 18 back then and that he didn't have any money. They arrive at her house. She asks him to tell Jenny that she enjoyed her enthusiasm to which he says he will. There is a silence between them before they say goodbye to each other. Sasha sees that Brandon is with the beautiful and talented Padma Lakshmi as she stalks his social media account. Marcus sends her a joke, she laughs and replies with sarcasm. Marcus smiles as he sees Sasha's message, he doesn't listen to Tony as he talks about their band's audition. Sasha invites Marcus and his father to her cousin's son's birthday party. Barry welcomes Sasha to his son's birthday party. He mentions that Sasha's parents are amazing godparents to Liam and are very close to him, as opposed to when she was eight years old to which her parents gifted her flip-flops. Marcus comes in and has an awkward greeting with Sasha and Veronica. Sasha tells him that his father is already there. Harry gives a lemonade to Kathy, a Diana Ross impersonator that Sasha's parents hired. He introduces himself as a huge Diana Ross fan. She tells him that she's a lemonade fan. They both laugh. Sasha answers a call from Brandon. He talks to her about his branding ideas for her. She is furious to hear this as she hopes his call would be regarding their wedding. She loudly badmouths him and realizes that the window in the room was open. Everyone can hear her. At a Chinese restaurant, Sasha rants to Marcus about Brandon and how she would stay single. He says a short reply, telling her that she forgot his words as her speech was so long. They laugh and the waitress serves them their food. She tells him that the food there is always terrible, he disagrees and tells her to try one of the dishes they ordered. She is taken aback as she eats it and asks him why she remembers the place there is so bad. He tells her that she remembers her whole childhood negatively. She agrees and says that the food is delicious. She says that the women there are still disappointed that neither of them can speak Cantonese. Marcus goes on to greet the women in Cantonese who greeted him back. He tells her that he learned to speak the language so he can get better service and sometimes free shumai from them. Sasha notices Marcus's band's flyer posted on a post as they walk. She hypes him up about being successful in his band but he dismisses it. He tells that he can't leave because he is his father's caregiver. She asks him if he plans on leaving San Francisco. 
he says he is not interested. He asks her about her dating life now that she and Brandon are over. She tells him that she would give dating a try again but if it fails, she would just raise a kid on her own. Marcus asks her if she is able to, she replies that one parent is enough and that she didn't even have parents before. Marcus tells her she did have parents, she tells him she had only herself. She tells that she needs to go as she has a big day tomorrow and they awkwardly hug each other goodbye. Marcus is at a poetry night event hosted by Jenny. He types to text Sasha about it and asks what she is doing, but doesn't send it. Meanwhile, Sasha is catering a rap party. She types asking Marcus the same, but doesn't send it as well. Someone talks to her, she turns around and is shocked to see who it is. At a spa, Marcus shares to his father that Jenny is great. He tells her that he has doubts about her and says that he likes Sasha better for him. Marcus compares the two and explains why he likes Jenny more. Harry says that there is no one like Sasha. He knows that Marcus only denies himself this and tells him that he must tell her how he really feels. Marcus and Sasha meet at a market. They tell each other that they have big news to share. Marcus goes on first, about to tell her how he feels towards her, but is stopped by Sasha saying that she met someone, referring to the guy that talked to her last night, and asks him about his news. Marcus, dismayed by this, lies and says that he just wants to ask if she would go to dinner with him and Jenny. She suggests a double date enthusiastically. Marcus, Jenny, and Sasha wait for Sasha's date at a high-end restaurant. Marcus notices that he is the only one wearing a tuxedo despite them all being in a classy restaurant. Sasha tells him that rich people go for the homeless look now and adds that Jenny is dressed accordingly. She smiles and asks her where her man is. She says there he is and we see Keanu Reeves, a famous actor, walk in. Both Marcus and Jenny are very surprised. Jenny's jaw drops as she watches Keanu and Sasha passionately kiss. Marcus awkwardly puts his hand around her shoulders. Sasha introduces Keanu to Marcus and Jenny. Jenny, starstruck, hugs him. Marcus remains calm and shakes hands with him. As they sit down, Keanu whispers to Sasha that she is stunning, and she is delighted. Marcus sees this and whispers to Jenny that she looks good to which she did not pay much attention to. They are served small portions of different unconventional food. Marcus doesn't seem satisfied. Keanu brings up Marcus being in a band. Sasha tells them that they are great and can be big if they want to. He tells them that they are just a block band. Keanu butts in and says that a man who embraces his mediocre nothingness shines brighter than any. Jenny looks at Marcus, knowing that he is hurt from Keanu's words. Marcus fakely thanks him. Keanu excuses himself to get some air. Jenny joins him. Sasha tells Marcus that Keanu meant the mediocre nothingness as a compliment. He shrugs it off. She asks what she thinks of him. He describes him negatively. Keanu and Jenny go back to them. Keanu tells them that they should go to his hotel and that he has paid for their bill. Marcus says that he didn't get the chance to fight for the bill. Keanu says the price and subtly degrades Marcus, and how it is out of his ballpark and cups his face. After Keanu and Jenny leave first, Sasha explains that what Keanu did was an honest show of affection. Marcus sarcastically says that Keanu is great. Sasha is triggered and brings up Jenny. He defends her. Sasha does the same for Keanu. Marcus just says that he is wrong. Sasha agrees, yet he adds that he is not wrong that he is still hungry after their expensive dinner. He goes on to shout, asking sarcastically if he could get a monochrome burrito to go. The people just stay silent while looking at him. Sasha awkwardly tries to tell them that it was just a joke. Jenny is amazed upon entering Keanu's hotel. The four of them drink wine. Keanu kisses Sasha, Marcus kisses Jenny, but she flinches. They play a game of truth or dare wherein one question was about who their childhood crush was. Sasha tells them that she had a crush on Marcus. Marcus is surprised and the two have a short conversation about it. Marcus and Keanu have a beef over a question. When Keanu says that Marcus's answer was disgusting, Sasha reads the next question, asking who they would pick to pass away. Keanu quickly points to Marcus. Marcus says he would pick Keanu. Jenny says she would pick Marcus, as Keanu and Sasha's cultural footprints are way bigger than his. Marcus says that he doesn't want to play the game anymore. Keanu asks why he is afraid. Marcus replies that he is not afraid and dares Keanu to smash a vase on his head, which he does without hesitating. He dares Marcus to strike him. Sasha says the game is done. Jenny urges Marcus to fight him. He punches Keanu in the face, but he asks him to go again. Marcus goes again but is immediately put in a chokehold by Keanu. Sasha stops them and yells at Keanu. She tells him that they are going to leave, and Keanu gets them a ride. Jenny tells Marcus that she is staying to talk to Keanu about the community center. On the ride home, Marcus tells Sasha that he was right about Keanu. Sasha says that he is to blame as well. They continue to argue, both of them criticizing each other's life decisions. Marcus stares at Sasha after her last rebut and kisses her. She is surprised and pushes him away. He apologizes and Sasha leans in to kiss him. They share a passionate kiss in the backseat of an Uber carpool. After they had made love at Sasha's house, Marcus tells her that he missed her, to which Sasha replied the same and they kiss. As he watches her prepare a dish, Marcus tells Sasha that it's nice to see her being herself again. Sasha thanks him for reminding her what home feels like. He says that he loves that she's back home. Sasha cradles Veronica's baby and says that she's a natural godmother. Veronica points out that Sasha can't cradle her baby if she's in New York for her restaurant. 
Marcus is surprised that she will still be going to New York as he thinks she would stay in San Francisco for a while. Sasha invites Marcus to go with her to New York. Marcus wears a casual outfit in a red carpet event with Sasha, as he was informed previously in the dinner with Keanu, that rich people don't wear classy suits now. Sasha tells him it's fine, but the guard says that coats are required. He wears the only available coat in the hotel. Sasha poses for the camera and introduces Marcus as her new boyfriend who is a regular guy. Marcus seems disappointed with this. At home, Marcus asks Sasha when she will be coming back from New York. Sasha tells she wasn't going back and moving to the next thing. Marcus tells with spite that it is because she is a celebrity chef and scoffs, saying that it's pretentious. Sasha doesn't add fuel to the fire and stays calm. Marcus continues to go and say that he hates the term elevated Asian cuisine, which is the food that Sasha makes. He says that Asian cuisine should not be elevated but authentic, just like what she used to make with his mother. Sasha says that he is saying that her food isn't authentic. Marcus agrees and tells that she's just catering to the rich white people. She asks him why he is dating her if he thinks that she's a sellout. Marcus rebuts, asking her why she dates him if he is just a regular guy, referring to her description of him at the red carpet event. She says that she meant it as a compliment. Marcus criticizes her life, and Sasha does the same. She tells him to not shame her for going after things as he is so scared to do anything new. Marcus disagrees and says he doesn't want to be just someone who's there, so that she won't have to show up in places alone. She asks what's wrong with supporting her. He tells her that she doesn't support him. She disagrees and asks him to not go with her tonight. Outside, she tells him that she loves him as he tries to apologize. She asks him to say if he wants to go to New York with her or not, to which he says he doesn't want to. Sasha mutters that he's a coward and goes in the car. She tries hard to stop herself from crying. Veronica tries to convince Sasha to talk to Marcus before she leaves. She doesn't listen and leaves. Marcus comes home to Harry kissing Kathy. He asks him why he didn't go with Sasha to New York. He reasons that he has responsibilities as his son and to his band. Harry says that it would break Judy's heart if she knew that Marcus lets life pass him by. He tells him to take a chance on something. He decides to go audition his band at Southeast, but his performance and behavior isn't the best. Tony gets mad at him. Marcus asks him to tell him that it is for the best that he and Sasha broke up, but he tells him he messed up. He leaves Sasha many voicemails, apologizing and telling her about his life. They auditioned again for Southeast and got in. Their band's merchandise sales also went up, and he got his own place. Saha's parents show up in New York to surprise Sasha. She asks why they are there. Her mother says that they try their best to make up for not being there for her before. Marcus goes to one of Sasha's restaurants and finds Veronica. He goes inside Sasha's office and finds boxes of his band's merchandise and asks Veronica why she would buy those. Marcus confidently comes into an expensive store to find a suit but leaves once he sees the prices. He goes into a cheaper store to buy a suit. Sasha walks the red carpet, and a reporter asks who she brought with her. She answers, her parents. Marcus comes to the front and tells a heartwarming speech about his feelings for her. Sasha says that she loves his speech and they share a kiss. They go inside together. Sasha brings him to her new restaurant that isn't open yet. She shows her dishes which are the same recipes as her mother's and shows the name of the restaurant, Judy's Way. She tells him that she wants to make the kind of food that makes you feel at home just like his mother made her feel. He starts to get emotional and they embrace each other. Sasha flies Harry and Kathy to Judy's way on opening night. Veronica makes her her baby's godmother. Marcus compliments Tony on his appearance. He congratulates Sasha and asks if everyone knows that he punched Keanu Reeves. She says that he should write a song about it to be sure. He chuckles, and we see the unfinished family portrait of the Kims now finished and displayed on the wall. 